All right. Uh, welcome to Cooking with Mel. We are going to be making two different things tonight. We're going to be making a strawberry sorbet, and then we're going to end with a cookies and cream ice cream. So tonight you're going to need a bunch of different things. Um, first of all, you're going to need about a pound of strawberries, which really means about a bread pan, about a three quarter bread pan's worth of strawberries. So it'll hit right about there in your pan. The next thing you're gonna need is the strawberries. We'll cut those up in a second. And to go with that, some honey. And if you prefer a more sour sorbet, then some lemon juice. And you're gonna need about a teaspoon, tablespoon of that. When we move to the uh, cookies and cream ice cream, you're gonna need two cups of half and half. Oreos or chocolate cookies. Sweetened condensed milk. You're gonna need a hand mixer for the cookies and cream ice cream and a blender for the strawberry sorbet. Um, if you'd like to have an extra large bowl, that would be great for mixing um, or for whipping the whipping cream. And then another bread pan again for that second ice cream. All right, other things that are handy um, are to have a couple of spatulas. Those are always very helpful um, in whatever utensils you use to measure them. All right, so we're gonna get started here. We're gonna start with our strawberry sorbet. So the first thing that you're gonna start doing is start cutting those strawberries. You can put them right into the blender if you want. If you're more of a bowl to blender type of person, then that's great too. Um, and you're gonna cut them either in halves or quarters. It doesn't really matter. It depends on the type of blender and how well your blender can blend things down. So for me, I'm gonna go quartered because we have an older blender. So we're gonna cut some of those strawberries like I said, into halves or quarters, and they're gonna go straight into the blender. It is better to have strawberries that are thawed or fresh um, because with blenders, as you know, then you have to add water to get it to blend properly. So I'm going with fresh strawberries. Okay. I'm going to add those in there. And sometimes thawed strawberries actually do quite well whole because they're a little mushier. So if you want, you don't have to cut them up as much. So that's pretty convenient for you if that's the case. All right. So when um, the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna drizzle the honey over the top. And you're gonna use a fourth cup of honey and drizzle it right over the top. All right, and this sorbet is awesome because that honey flavor is actually really prominent, so you get a lot of that good stuff. So I'm just gonna drizzle that right over, use a spoon. All right, so this says it's a two ingredient sorbet, but if you'd like to mix it up a little bit, something you need to know about sorbets is you usually have a base for a sorbet, um, and then you add, you can add like chunks of other things into it to kind of give it extra flavor. So um, oftentimes what I'll do with something like this is I'll add something like raspberries or peaches or lime to add chunks into the sorbet. So what I'll do is I'll blend up the honey and strawberries and a little bit of lemon juice, which is about a tablespoon of lemon juice, and then, 
I will mix in um, chunks of whatever the separate fruit is that I want to put in there. So you can decide to do that tonight. You can also make it very simple. Either way, it's going to be delicious. So I'm putting a tablespoon of lemon juice. And then the blending begins. So when you're blending a sorbet, you want it to be pretty darn smooth. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna set it on like a medium to high setting. Um, for me, I have a Vitamix, so I have a setting all the way up to 10. I'm gonna go around to seven. I'm gonna blend it at a seven for about a minute and a half to two minutes. You wanna see that the consistency, you can't see any drops of honey in there anywhere. So that's what you're looking for when you're blending. You also don't want to see a lot of strawberry seeds. So if you blend it and you still see a bunch of strawberry seeds, then you haven't blended it long enough. All right, so it's going to get a little loud over Zoom, so I apologize for that. But here goes my blender. All right, looking good. So the consistency of this is super smooth. I can't see any seeds and that's kind of the point. So with any um, sorbet, you wanna really make sure that the consistency is smooth and looks kind of liquidy, almost like a juice. If you really don't like seeds or if you don't like a super thick, um, thickness to a sorbet, then you can also take a sifter like I have here, and you can run it through a sifter first before putting it into the actual bread pan. So that's just another way to get any of those extra seeds that were in there out. So that's what I did. It looks amazing. And it smells delicious. All right. Okay, so if you can see this a little bit closer, it's really clear, you can't see anything extra on the top and it's not frothy, and that is what you want. All right, so then you're going to take it and put it into the bread pan. And that's when, if you have an extra fruit or something, you're just going to sprinkle the extra fruits on top, or you can mix it in if you want the chunks throughout your survey. So for me, I'm going to make this one quite simple. And just leave it as the strawberry survey, because I love that. And then if I had a lime, I would probably sprinkle some lime chunks in there. All right, so before you can serve this, you wanna put it in the, um, you wanna put it in the freezer for about four hours and it should be kind of perfect at that point. And I made one earlier today and it came out looking like this and I put lemon balm and mint on top and that was kind of a fun way to do that. Lemon balm is basically a leaf that tastes like lemon and it has a smell of lemon. Um, so it can add to kind of the aroma of, of the sorbet and then mint also adds to it. It's kind of like a, a mint julep type of thing or a daiquiri type of thing. All right. Okay. 
That is the simplest sorbet there ever was. Um, but that's kind of the beauty of it. It's something like that is really simple, but you can add as many flavors as you want to it. Um, just the biggest thing is you want it to consistently be kind of a really smooth mix. You don't want it to feel like a, a blended smoothie where there's chunks in it or anything like that. It's all about getting those chunks out and making it so it's really smooth. All right, so that's the first one and that's where we're gonna end with the strawberry sorbet. Um, if there's any questions, you're, feel free to ask now and then I'm gonna move on to the next one. All right, so next we're gonna move on to a cookies and cream ice cream and this is uh, just really delicious. It's mostly whipped and cream, and then it's a bit of sweetened condensed milk and some Oreos. So what you're gonna start off with is a giant bowl, something that can catch a lot of the spray from whipping the whipped cream. Then we're gonna add, we're going to fold in the sweetened condensed milk, and then we're gonna crush some cookies and fold that in as well. So you're gonna need a bread pan for that. If you have a deeper bread pan, that's, um, I suggest that for this because this is more of a whipped um, type of ice cream, so it will take up a lot more space in the pan. So you are gonna take a measuring cup and put two cups of whipped cream into your bowl. And then you are actually going to whip this pretty much completely. So what you're going to do is you're going to whip this for about three to five minutes at the highest setting you have on your hand mixer. And you're going to whip this for uh, three to five minutes until you start to see the folds or the ripples or the waves is what other people call it. Um, you see them staying consistently. They're not like slowly uh, disappearing. So you want to see the folds all the way across where they're not disappearing anymore. All right. Now I'm going to start my hand mixer. It's going to be kind of loud, so bear with me here. So if you've never whipped a whipped cream before, I'm gonna show you the different phases of what whipped cream is. The first one is called Peaky, and this one is just so that it gets it light, um, and you get lots of bubbles on the top. So that's what Peaky looks like. The next phase is gonna show some ripples, but what you want is like a heavy wave on, on the cream. <laughs> All right, when it's about halfway done, you're gonna see the majority of the bubbles go away, and now you're gonna start seeing like ripples and waves start to happen, but then they're gonna go away really quickly. And that's how you know you're halfway done.
All right, so you know the whipped cream is done when the waves stay there, and so it looks a lot like that. So you can see all the waves in the whipped cream. They stay, and it looks nice and fluffy. That is what you're looking for. All right, next you are going to take your um, your sweetened condensed milk and open that up. You're going to use the entire can and pour that in, and then you're going to take a spatula and you're going to fold it. You don't want to mix it too hard. You just want to make sure um, that you fold it in so you can't see any marbled lines, and I'll show you what that looks like here in a second. So you're going to not go like this, you're going to fold it under and just bring it up. And that's folding versus stirring. Fold it under, bring it up. So the big thing is it starts off looking kind of marbled, so you're going to see a bunch of lines kind of in the mix of where the condensed milk is. So you know you're done mixing it when you don't see those marbled lines anymore. So I just keep folding and it's pretty light because you don't want it to lose that kind of whipped kind of ness, if you will. I don't know. I don't know how to say that. Whippedness, whippiness. Either way. So you're just folding it under. All right. So mine is no longer with any marbled lines. It's nice and light still. But of course, a lot of those waves are gone because you just put kind of a dense um, syrupy texture into it. So don't worry if all those like waves are gone. All right. So now you're going to take those Oreo cookies. And I actually uh, like to use a sandwich bag to do this part. But if you don't have a sandwich bag, you can grab like a bowl and just smash the cookies in there. You're going to put 10 cookies into the bag or into the bowl, and you're going to smash them. And you're gonna, you can make as big or as little chunks as you want. That's on, uh, that's on you to decide what you, what you need. And then I always take the end of a spatula or even the uh, ice cream scoop, and I'll use that to smash the cookies. I know, super awesome. So let's see here. So I'm gonna do about that many cookies in the bag. Lay it down and smash them. <laughs> For some reason, this is super therapeutic, so I highly recommend making this any time you're frustrated. Okay, so I have one two consistency. You got a couple big chunks and smaller chunks. That's kind of what you're looking for. Then I'm just going to mix it around, make sure it's all broken up. And that just goes directly into the bowl. Right here. The beauty is then the mess is already in the bag and you don't really have much cleanup. So, same thing as before don't mix but fold. You want to make sure you fold it in so it's evenly dispersed. You really don't need to fold it too much for it to be effective. Okay. So you can see the chunks, everything is covered. And then that goes right into the bread pan. Okay.
If you want to make it really pretty and impress all your friends, then you can take a couple extra cookies, split them in half, and decorate the top. All right, that is it. Everything goes in the, or in the freezer for four hours and then it's ready to eat. Um, the ice cream should scoop really well. The sorbet you should take out for at least 20 minutes to let it just kind of um, melt just slightly so it's a little easier to take out with the ice cream scooper. Um, the cookies and cream one should, should scoop really well just out the freezer. All right, cool. Thanks everybody for being here. We'll see you next time in two weeks where we'll be making chicken fajita pasta. So thanks for cooking with me and we'll see you next time.